All right. Uh, my name is uh, Eric Stotzer, and I'm going to be talking to you about OpenMP Accelerator model for TI's ARM plus DSP devices, or I would say DSP plus ARM devices. Uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, Ajay Jayaraj, who's actually right over there. He's done a lot of the actual work in, in, in what I'm showing you, especially in the runtime area, so it's definitely a collaboration here. Um, so first off, I just want to give you a feeling for where we're coming from, where TI is coming from in this area. So we've had this DSP processor for quite a long time now that has evolved, uh, you know, one first generation back in the uh, 90s to where it is today. It's a VLIW-based processor. It's got eight functional units. It's got a uh, program cache, data cache. Uh, it gets a lot of, it's got SIMD instructions. This is our DSP. We've, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of this DSP in the embedded space, really in the telecommunication infrastructure space. So these would be like your base stations, your networking hubs for telecommunications infrastructure. That's where we've made our bread and butter to, to, to build this processor. So that's our DSP. You can think of a DSP as like a heavy duty math coprocessor optimized for doing math computations, especially multiply accumulate. So then, uh, those were usually single core for many years, but then, you know, when the multi-core revolution happened, we, of course, did the same thing. We put multiple versions of that processor on one chip. So we ended up with a processor called the C6678, which had eight of these DSPs on there. And one of the other things we did was we added floating point. So this is the first processor that we wanted to run OpenMP on. And so, before we even got into ARM and plus DSP heterogeneous, we were trying to figure out how to run OpenMP on this DSP processor, which we did. We have a, DS, we have a product today that you can buy, OpenMP product, compiler product, that you can run on this DSP. And uh, so then that sort of evolved. Oh, and then our major play to attract HPC was to talk about how energy efficient we were. Because again, coming from the embedded space, that was always one of our uh, main drivers was to be low power. So I'm just showing you uh, something that we showed in our booth last year. This is work done by some folks from KTH uh, and it's Gilbert Netzer, Leonard Johnson and Daniel Onlin. They, sh they had a little demo running where they showed a Linpack power profile and then they measured various uh, consumption, power consumption for Linpack. The key was that they got around 2.1 gigaflops per watt, which was, at the time, you know, that's pretty impressive. I'm going to leave that for you to look at online. This, this presentation will be online to read the detail. I just wanted to point that out. It'll be on the OpenMP website. So, so then, then you go, we start integrating these DSPs onto multiple cards, and people start talking about putting these into PCIe slots and using them as accelerators. So now you're running OpenMP programs on these individual DSPs that you're getting through from like an Intel platform or something like that. So that's, that was sort of our last year time frame. And then we came out, we announced this chip at the last supercomputing, and this is the processor I'm really going to focus on more today. So we took those eight DSPs and we added four ARM A15s on the front of them. And so now we have this heterogeneous processor with four A15s that are running SMP Linux, and then you've got these eight DSPs over there. So this is where the accelerator model becomes very interesting for us, because we want to be able to have people who are just taking their ARM code and then carving out pieces of it and offloading it to those DSPs. This architecture uh, is interesting because the DSPs and the ARMs have access to a shared memory. So there's no uh, copying you know, over a PCIe bus or anything. There's just some work you need to do to translate the virtual memory address that Linux sees to a physical memory address that the, the DSP will see, but that's just a pointer translation. It's still the same memory space, so you don't have to do the memory copy. There's also some interesting uh, I.O. peripherals on this device for moving things around in the system. I'm not going to get into those so much today, but I just wanted to highlight those. Uh, and there's a lot of on-chip uh, actual memory that you use to get to get real peak performance, you move things into this on-chip memory space. So, what? 
It's a, a, the chip can actually access up to 10 gigabytes, okay? So the ARM actually has an extension where it has a 40-bit address space. The DSPs can only see 32 bits of address at a time, so you have to figure out a way to kind of carve things up. You, know, you have to work in essentially 4 gigabyte blocks, because that's all the DSP can address at one time. But the ARM can actually address 10 gigabytes. Oh, so then you go from before I was showing you those boards to now we actually have vendors who are building systems based on that SOC that I just showed you. So we have, I know that's incredibly small, you can't read that, but again, I put that on there so you can go online and take a look at it. But it, come by the TI booth, we can show you more detail on this. We have a company called Encore who's taking a chassis that's from the traditional embedded world and he's saying, hey, let's use this for high performance computing. So he's built these compute nodes that plug into this chassis based on that processor I just showed you. He's using the OpenMP Accelerator model prototype that we've put together to actually run programs on it. And then we have HP in their Moonshot uh, chassis where they've selected that chip I just showed you as one of their platforms that they're supporting in Moonshot. So they've built this cartridge that's got four of those processors on there and they've connected it using some of those high-speed interconnects that I highlighted on the chip before. So now, what I'm trying to show you is we've evolved from cards that are plugging into PCIe to systems where the ARM is the main processor in the system and it's offloading code to the DSPs. What are you doing back there? Man behind the curtain? Okay. So, I'm just transitioning now to explain to you how we actually implement the OpenMP accelerator model on our DSP. And this is just kind of a boilerplate of why OpenMP is good, why we wanted to use it for DSP. Uh, you know, these are just nice things about OpenMP, why it was attractive for us when we were looking at going from a single core DSP to multi-core DSP, why we were attracted to using OpenMP, okay? Mainly it was, you know, you had this incremental approach, it was portable, and it was continuing to evolve. So this gives you a feel for how we actually run OpenMP on the DSP processors. So we have a stack over here, so this is sort of the user's view of OpenMP. Underneath that is a runtime layer, but our runtime layer is running right, we call it bare metal, it's, there's no operating system between the runtime layer and the de device. There's just these low-level drivers that the OpenMP runtime is sitting on top of. So that you're very close to the hardware when you're running OpenMP on the DSP processors. Um, we actually leverage hardware that's uh, built into our chip called Navigator, which are these hardware cues hard, uh, that, are, that are on the chip that were actually put there for doing telecommunications, but we're repurposing them for, uh, uh, for putting events between threads in our OpenMP implementation. Right now we support 3.0 and, a f oh, so how much of the OpenMP specification do we currently support? On the DSPs, we support 3.0 and then we have our OpenMP accelerator model prototype where we've just supported the OpenMP device constructs from 4.0. So we're at... Our, I mean, we want to support the spec totally, so, you know, yeah, obviously our customers maybe use more parts of it than they do other, but yeah, we, you know. The, the, the compiler for the DSPs is from us. It's a proprietary TI compiler. It's a C compiler, yeah, with C and C++. So, okay, I didn't get all those questions, but you got it. All right. Uh, just wanted to highlight for you what this multi-core navigator hardware is. So that's a block that's actually on the chip. It's a bunch of hardware cues. There's, uh, on this particular device, there's 16K of these hardware cues. The nice thing is that they have atomic access, so you can have one thread be posting a, a, an event into those cues, another thread pulling it out, and you have this nice atomic access capability built into them, so you don't have to lock around them or anything like that. So uh, it's a very important part of our runtime. All right. So now came OpenMP 4.0. Again, my description of, of TI's OpenMP is following kind of what I showed you before with the hardware. First, we supported the DSPs, and now that we have OpenMP 
we're supporting the heterogeneous model. Um, lots of good things were added in OpenMP 4.0, but I'm going to focus here on what we did uh, with the device support. Do we have customers that use Fortran? We have people that have approached us and said, do you have a Fortran compiler? But so far, we haven't had anybody make it a requirement. Okay, they've been willing to use C and C++. But we're always on the edge of saying, okay, we need a Fortran compiler. We need a Fortran compiler. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to skip this slide. There we go. Okay. So in OpenMP 4.0, we added this target. Uh, I say we because I'm part of the committee that actually defined the OpenMP 4.0 specification, and in particular, the, these new device constructs, the accelerator model. Um, but we have this new OMP target construct that allows, that enables you to offload code and data to a, a separate device, in this case, our DSP cores. So here we have the host device, which is our ARM cores running SMP Linux, offloading code over to our target device, which is our DSPs. We have some sort of, we have this concept of mapping data to the device, mapping data from the device. And our device, we actually are just leveraging uh, the shared memory. We're not actually doing a copy. So, um, on the device constructs, you have this concept of mapping data to a device. So you say OMP target data, map variable A to a device, map variable B, map variable X. So this is saying, map this data from the host device to the target device. So map it from the ARM space to the, to the DSP space. Now, a design goal that we had was we wanted to be able to support systems where that was a shared memory, where the DSP could access, where the accelerator and the host could access that same memory, or a distributed memory where you would have to do copies. So the model is defined in such a way that both types of systems are supported. So like in this first case, you know, we have our DSPs, we have our ARMs, and for our example, they're both accessing basically the same variable, but they may cache a local version of it. Or in a more traditional accelerator case, you have something where you actually have to copy it into some other memory. Both models are supported by the uh, OpenMP 4.0 specification. So here's just showing you what actually happens when you uh, can offload one of these regions to uh, the accelerator to another device you've got this target construct and then within that region you can then have tr re uh, um, regular OpenMP constructs so this says take this region of code offload it to the DSPs in our case and then go parallel once you get there and then you end up you're, you're mapping these variables in this case using array sections to describe the memory behind the pointers For us, a parallel for, uh, yes, to get good performance on the DSP, you don't have to do some of the more uh, fancier things that were added for like GPUs, like the team construct and things like that. You can, the DSPs are very good, just regular OpenMP targets. So you can just do things like parallel for. So if you have uh, DSPs or whatever, I don't know, yeah. you have to uh, start uh, eight threads? Yes. So with eight, the question was how many threads do we use? We have eight DSPs, so we use we basically stick at eight threads. We hard code one thread per each DSP. So we'd have eight threads launched to do this. Do you have affinity issues? We really don't, do we have affinity issues? Not so much yet, because they're all basically have the same sort of distance to memory. But down the road, you know, that might become more of a problem for us. The, the, uh, the, the the SOC itself can access how many megabytes of memory are, is on the device. The SOC can access 10 gigabytes, but the DSPs have a 32-bit address space, so they can get to four. All right, so how do we make OpenMP 4.0 run on this ARM plus DSP? We call it K2H. That's three of the letters that are extracted from the very long alphabet soup that uh, is the official name for it. So on K2H, uh, this is the solution that we, that we are currently using 
for implementing uh, the OpenMP 4.0 accelerator model. So on the ARMS, we're just using the GCC toolchain, which supports OpenMP already. And then on the DSPs, we're using the, the OpenMP compiler that we developed for the, for, that I showed you earlier, that we developed for the DSPs. Okay? And then we have a, a runtime that we've based loosely on libgomp. We use the API functions, but we've rewritten a lot of it underneath to use our hardware cues. Okay? So we send, for example, this piece of code might come through our compiler. We use, we're using a source-to-source -source step that extracts the part that needs to go to the DSP. We take that part, we run it through our DSP compiler. We insert the necessary communication code into the ARM side and the DSP side, and then send the host code through the GCC compiler, and then load it up and run it, and we have the, the code starts running on the ARM side, and then invokes the code that's running over on the DSP side. So the essence of it is that we use the TI tools to compile for the DSP, we use the ARM tool, the GCC compiler for the ARM side, and we have a front-end source-to-source -source translator that splits the original source code into those two streams. Make sense? And then what we're using actually underneath is we have an OpenCL implementation that can offload from our ARMS to our 6 axis, so we're reusing that to actually implement the... Uh, I mean, if you looked at the code that the compiler was producing, you'd see OpenCL code calls that are being used to offload the code. We're not using OpenCLC, but we're using the API functions to actually marshal the kernels that we've already extracted into the, uh, uh, the DSP code, all right? So this is the, that parallel region. We outlined it into a function, but we invoked it through an OpenCL call, okay? So that's basically it. It's, it's pretty straightforward at this moment. We use a source-to-source -source translator. We create a GCC side for the ARM, create a DSP side for the DSPs. We stitch in the necessary communication between the two, which relies on OpenCL for doing that. We load it up and we run it. And, and you can see a demo of it in our booth. So I encourage you to come on by. I can give you more detail. I can show it running on actual, uh, the Encore platform, the Brown Dwarf system. And uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Are there any more questions? Yeah, we're running SMP Linux. Yeah, it's it's like uh, there's two two versions out there. We run Ubuntu, and then we have another one that's from TI called Arag, uh, from Linaro. Okay, but the uh, those systems I showed you are going to be running Ubuntu. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of performance analysis on the DSPs. Unfortunately, it's hard to make it um, available through the Ubuntu systems because we have these these special kind of adapters that you have to uh, plug into them. So we're trying to work through how to make that stuff available to uh, users without having to go you know go into the back and plug things into your system. So uh, we have a lot. It's just hard to make it available at the moment. Now the embedded guys are used to that, you know, because they just have it on their desktop. They just plug stuff into it. This is a different model for us, where it's back in a room somewhere, right? Yeah. So. All right. Thank you.